uh, gotten involved in this naming rights of the, of the old football stadium, Mile High Stadium, and we got in a compromise. And several different people that were all politically astute uh, came up and said, well, the Mayor Webb is term limited out. It's a nonpartisan race. You should run for mayor. You love the city. You've been on all these nonprofit boards and committees. And so I, th I thought about it. I went around the country for about 18 months, and uh, there was a fellow named Chris Gates who uh, ran the National Civic League at that time. And he, he engineered a whole tour down the eastern seaboard so I could meet a bunch of mayors. It, it, can you make a difference? Uh, would I be any good at it? Would I like it? And I kind of, kind of it was like putting your toe in the water. I, I, I just really couldn't. I mean, even then, you looked at it and said, why would anyone do that? And I would never hung out with elected officials. I didn't hang out with the class president or any of the student council when I was a kid. I mean, those those no, guys didn't were, hang. They didn't hang you, out with me. You were a geek with, uh, you know, what did you say, Coke bottle glasses? <laughs> yeah, and acne yeah. and scrawny and yeah. You don't have to go over it every. It's in the book. They don't have to. We have to. <laughs> we don't have to go over it too much. But but I think that that. And you couldn't get the girls either. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think the, the 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 tipping point on the decision really was there was a point where I was toying with the idea and there were all these traditional political types who were almost like a made-for-TV movie. They were, you know, the, the, the embittered city councilwoman, the Latino who had been the city auditor and at, at loggerheads with the mayor, uh, the state senator, the African-American state senator who was a brilliant speaker. But they all didn't seem to me to have any experience in business or small business. Right. And all my customers kept saying that every elected official was a bum. And, and they were all in it for themselves and all they cared about was their own circle. And it seemed to me that, that there ought to be more people from business that would go into government. And I kind of went into it never thinking I'd win. Everyone told me if, and I, they said, you, I mean, several people, one of the early meetings, uh, when, we, when I said, we're not going to do, not only we're we not going to do any negative ads, we're not going to do any opposition research, none. And several people got you know, up and left the room. They said, well, you, don't have, you won't have a chance. So we didn't expect to win. But there was an appetite out there for somebody who wasn't just like everybody else and, and made goofy ads and didn't do attack ads. Um, you know, but it was a, it, there was no epiphany. It wasn't something like, I mean, when I all of a sudden became, a, the general election happened and I, and I got double the number of votes of anybody else. I didn't quite get 50%, but with six candidates, I got 48%. And I didn't know what a chief of staff did. I remember Michael Bennett, who became my first chief of staff, was asking me questions like, who are you going to pick? And I said, I don't know, what's the chief of staff do? You know, they don't have them in the restaurant business.